Let's do it. All right. So this is the About Violence podcast. This is your host, Tim Kennedy. And directly across from me is my good friend, Sheepdog Response Trainer, and all around badass, Chantry. Hello, Tim. And to his left and my right is Michelle. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm the program director at Apogee. Tim's school. Our, 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 our school. school. Yep. Uh, getting ready to go into our second year. So that's very exciting. Um, I also have two kids and been married for 12 years. Um, and I'm, I'm, we like to travel. We've been doing a lot of traveling. And How old are the kiddos? Uh, six and eight, almost nine. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Good ages. Great ages. Good age to travel yep. with. So this episode is talking about traveling and uh, traveling with children and in an effort of taking care of yourself and your family, how do you vacation? How do you go on missions trips? How do you, um, heck, go to Disneyland with your family and make sure that they are safe. So Michelle being program director at Apogee, she's working with lots of little ones and uh, mm -hmm. a vacationer and traveler of, of with her and her family. Um, I think also contrast from the, a couple of hairy handed ogres to sit across from each other. So a little um, on the spectrum of what it's going to look like in planning, maybe slightly different approach. I think she put it best like it's, it's about avoiding violence this time, right? Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. So that's what this episode, that's what this episode is, is, uh, protecting your family while traveling. Um, lots of different ways to do that. I think, uh, f for me, I like to take an end state and reverse plan off of that. So not to be weird, but if I was like my mission for me to go and travel is go to a place, have a great time. Everybody is safe and sound and uh, fun is to be had. That's my mission. So then how do I reverse plan off of that? Um, that's, I think, where people start struggling. What, is, what does it actually look like to preventatively start pre-planning to make sure you and your family are going to have a great time and are going to be safe? Yeah, absolutely. Pre-planning. I think that's the, the key word here. If you're going to, sometimes you don't have to do anything. Like if we're going to go to Fredericksburg and we're going to hang out at a B and B or a, um, like a turnkey bed and breakfast, mm -hmm. um, not much has to be done. I go online, I book it, I show up, they have beds, they have potable water, they have toilets that work. Um, there's a support system close by. If yeah. Everything goes wrong. Right down the road, right? Not really any threats in Fredericksburg besides it's a little too hot here right now yeah. and too dry and the grapes are sad. Um, but like nothing really pre-planning needs to be done besides making a reservation, making sure your car's good, that you have snacks. You know, it's a couple hour drive from here. So that car ride alone will take a little bit of planning. But like I think most parents knowing their kids, um, whether you're a device parent or you're a snack parent or you're a book parent or whatever, whatever your approach is to making a two hour long car ride be bearable. That's about all you have to do. If you're going to go on a missions trip to Mortania and help dig a well, if you're going to go to Burkina Faso, Niger, like Djibouti, a little different, a little different. Yeah. You're going to go to Paris. You're going to do, you're going to, you know, you have a, a daughter, she's about to be 13 and, uh, you want to go take her and see the Sistine Chapel. You want to take her down to the river and at sunset, you know, sit there and, and talk about the future. Cool. That's your, that's your mission. It's a different problem set and pre-planning is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So for you, like, what do you do when, um, right at the end of last school year, as we're getting prepped and figuring out what is what is year two look like at Apogee Cedar Park, um, you're amazing to come on as a pro program director. Thank you for that, first of all. But then second, you're like, so I can't start yet because I have had a vacation planned. Those were your exact, ex exact words for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did what did that mean when you said I had a vacation planned? 
So yeah, we already had a trip trip planned to Florida. We really wanted to see some beaches better than uh, Texas here. We got beaches, but it's not the same. No. Um, so yeah, planning, even you know, just going down to Florida, I think when you have kids, just does take a little bit of pre-planning. Where are you gonna stay? It's different than if you're just traveling as a couple, you just go with the flow. Um, you gotta think about where are we gonna eat? Which, you know, so we went to South Beach in Miami, but it's like, okay, what, what parts of Miami are safe that you would want to travel around with uh. your kids? Um, and then, you know, get what are the best beaches? What are you, what are you gonna see in the beaches? Um, it's a cool experience. Side note, we did, we were swimming and we swam with two manatees. They just came right up to us, so. That's cool. Yeah, that was an awesome experience. Um, you know, we also go to Disney World a lot, but I will say just as far as traveling with kids, sometimes those experiences in nature, I think, um, make the bigger memories. So we always try to balance um, making time for those types of things, not just the, the theme parks and the, the well-known attractions. Uh, how, how did you pick your hotel? So we wanted something that was going to be easy with the kids to have um, options on site for food and a child-friendly pool and, of course, somewhere that we would feel safe, um, nicer area of town, nicer amenities. Um. I mean, ch- child-friendly pool. There are, there are hotels and there are resorts where like children under the age of 16 are not allowed to be in the pool. No. So like if, if your mission is go on vacation, have a good time and have my kids be safe, like my children would be furious if you're like, sorry, guys, can't get in the pool. Yeah. You know, um, because the beach is fun with kids for like for this long, yeah. right? And they're like, all right, I'm over the sand. Like, well, you can prolong like how long a beach is fun with pre-planning, right? You know, you show up and you don't have a shovel, you don't have a bucket, you don't have sunscreen, you don't have a tent, you don't have water, you don't have a cooler. Like, you have 30 minutes at yeah. the beach. You add a couple of toys, maybe you got an hour. Yeah. You add some cold water and you add some protection from the sun and the wind. Okay, maybe you have two hours. You know, you bring a surfboard. Maybe you have three hours. It's a long way to travel for three hours of fun, though. Yeah, right? like, but I mean, yeah. but that's where like the pre-planning comes in, where something as simple as just going to the beach, like being a beach kid that grew up on the beach. You know, like there, there were there were times where I would be at the beach for six hours. You know, like we would we would not be leaving for six hours, and my parents. This is the eighties. A little, yeah. little different. They're nowhere to be found. You know, like yeah. There, um, we would climb out onto the breakers and we would be down, you know, in the tide pools. And, uh, now, now it is helicopter parent where everybody's involved in everything. And, uh, you like, you're even, even like the way I parent on the beach, when my son is going out to boogie board, like I am 10 feet from him at any time, mm-hmm. you know, if a shark is going to get there, it's, I'm going to get the, sh- I'm going to get the shark first. That'd be cool though. Shark kill. Yeah. yeah. I did think the first manatee we saw was a shark. So did I you? completely tried to lift like, my 100. Gah, gah, gah. I tried to lift my 100 pound son out of the water. I was pretty terrified for yeah. a second. They're like, mom, it's amazing. He's like your size. <laughs> yes. He's a big guy. So yeah, that was a little terrifying, <sighs> but talking about pre-planning. So even just, uh, we learned, so we stayed on Hollywood beach in Florida. Well, 30 minutes away, we found driving to South beach. The beach was so much nicer. We got, I mean, we were there for hours snorkeling just because the water was so crystal clear and beautiful. So even within the same city, you know, yeah. when you start doing your research and y- you find better yeah. little gyms. We, we actually went to Miami last, last summer and it was like same thing, just researching. Because my thing is I want it to be like secluded, right? Like I don't want to yeah. go to the beach where there's like 400 other people out there. So yeah. um, we, we have some family that lives there though. So we were able to kind of hey, where's a good spot to go? Yep. Uh, we wound up staying in uh, the hotel was like a block away from that uh, condo that had collapsed. So like we're driving past them like, oh shit. Like, yep. <laughs> wow. How's the engineering over here? <laughs> so you, you both use the word research. Yes. Mm-hmm. What does that look like? So um, whether you're CONUS or OCONUS, whether you're traveling abroad or you're in the United States, um, you know, there's lots of resources. When, when I'm traveling, I, I have a very prescribed list of things that I have to do. Because I'm in the military, I have to enroll in the Department of State STEPS program. And that gets me notifications in and around the area that I'm going to be traveling to. So the embassy knows that I'm there. Um, the embassy sends me uh, emails letting me know about problems, um, things that I need to do- know about vaccinations and immunizations. Um, that's a must 
do for me. That's is, actually in my notes because whenever uh, Mel and I went to Mexico a couple of years ago, like I just was researching and I found that. And so I enrolled in it and like notified them and I printed out directions from where we were to where the embassy was in case something crazy happened and I had to get from there to there. I didn't want to be trying to figure out directions yeah. in Spanish in the middle of chaos. So I had like the old map quest printed out yep. directions, you know, so. So in, in like the 2022, there's in, in navigation, it's, it's super important. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different apps that I use that you're able to offline download, you know, maps.me and even Google maps. Do you know that you can do this? You can highlight on Google maps, an area that you're going to be in and it will da download all of the map data onto your phone. So even if you don't have Wi-Fi, even if you don't have cellular service, you're still able to use it. That's awesome. You have Garmin Insight or, or in reach where you could just bring one little tiny Garmin and you pay a small fee. Like, I mean, it's a couple, it's like maybe $50 a month and you have connectivity via satellite that I can text. I can text anybody I have and Garmin that gives me map data on all of my apps that I use for map data. It automatically gives me a sat link for all that map data. And then having that, that warm and fuzzy of a printed out version, like uh, I think a lot of people are like, what is MapQuest? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you know what that is? I used it when I first started driving that a was, long time ago. That was the only reason anybody had printers yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just so you could print yeah. out directions. Yeah. Do you remember like, um, I, I would take an actual map and this is like pre-military. I would measure how long I'd be driving. If I was going to go from San Luis Obispo, California, and I was going to go down to Long Beach. Like scaling it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would figure out how many miles I'd be on one. What is my off ramp? I'd have to like, you know, flip over and look at box G three, go to the map G three, and there's a zoom in where I could see the off ramp number. And I'm going to take off ramp seventeen, and then I'm going to go from the you know like from the five to the four hundred five, the five the four hundred five to this off ramp, and that is what it would have to do. What we had to do was actually take take notes. And then MapQuest came, mm -hmm. which was way later. Not to age like yeah. not to date myself. I never would have got anywhere with. Yeah, a map, <laughs> and then MapQuest made it easy because it gave you all the step by steps. But do you remember driving and it, you like it would say drive one point three miles down this road and you're going to turn right on this road and you would look at your odometer and you're at fifty three point four. So I know I have to be at fifty four point six for me to make my right turn. It's wild. Yeah. Kids don't know these days. No, freaking kids. Well, whenever I was like in the police academy, they gave us like a big like Rand McNally maps book, you know, for the city. Yeah. And uh, I remember looking around and like the, the 20 year olds that had just got out of college and I'm like, wait, so how do I use it? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we use a thing called PACE, P-A-C-E, -A -A -C -E, Primary Alternate Contingent and Emergency. And we use that for communication. We kind of use it for everything, but communication and navigation are a must. So the way that we use it is if I'm gonna plan a route, primary is gonna be my cell phone with my cellular connectivity for me to be able to plan how I get from point A to point B. My alternate is going to be a downloaded map onto my phone in an app that is resting on my phone and I know I can get there. I hit start navigate, so it's already pre-planned and it's already on there. Contingent would be like a map and then emergency would be literally the handwritten um, navigation plan with like a compass. Sounds excessive, right? If you're in a foreign country, probably not. In the United States, yes, probably, but. Um, so in research, in the Sheepdog Response courses during the Situational Awareness, we talk about ACOCA. And um, it's, it's an older version of defining an operational environment. Now this sounds really military, and this might seem kind of off-putting, but once I get through it, I think hopefully it'll make sense. So you have observations, cover concealment, obstacles, key terrain, avenues of approach. That's a COCA. So if you apply that to like a vacation, if like observations are just kind of generally what's happening around there, um, cover concealment, obstacles, and key terrain. Those are the, the first two that are real meaningful. Obstacles, if I'm gonna be going to Disney World, what are obstacles for me to have a great time at Disney World? The other people there. That's what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Long lines. Yeah, lines. So in planning, in research, when are good times to go to Disney World? I mean, yeah. Off I know, the top but of I'm head, not I don't telling. Know, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know too, and I am also not telling. Summer weekends. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, everybody should go in July. Go on spring break. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then spring break. Um, it's tricky because those change all the time. 
um, Disney, Disneyland and Disney World and Disney in general, actually, on my poop list right now. I just canceled everything and will not be going until they shift gears. We canceled Disney Plus. I'm not ready to break up with Disney World yet. Yeah. I did all the things. Canceled a Disney vacation. Canceled Disney Plus. My kids would be really mad at me. My daughter has a tattoo. So I was the true Disneyland dad because I was deployed. Like literally, I'm a deplo- I was deployed dad for the first 10 years of her life. And the only time that she saw me is I'd come back from deployments and we would go to Disneyland. So she has Disneyland tattooed on her arm. Like it is a thing in our family. Special. Yeah. And now I'm just, we're at this mor- moral. Yeah divide right now you're like you're, you're gonna have to have that covered up with six flags yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, hopefully it's a temporary breakup i hope so i think yeah. so like everything comes in waves but i i morally can't i can't abide them the uh but you know in obstacles people weather like i cannot i could not survive in july in florida right now yeah. no no way not unless especially dragging beach. around little kids yeah. right yeah. traveling abroad uh, if we're going to be going to um Central America. When is hurricane season? Uh, I don't know. Well, here's a tricky thing. <laughs> For Texans, right, we, we're, we're north. We're, we're like used to like our proper fall and spring hurricane seasons. You know, when you, we also have a po- coastal influence that's going to be coming from the Pacific side, it's totally different. So in your research of figuring out obstacles, key terrain and avenues of approach, like these are things that you need to know. Avenues of approach. Um, that's like main roads, airports. In what's happening right now with travel, I just flew back a few days ago um, and I had an 18 hour drive to a 12 hour train ride, to a four hour hitchhike ride, to a 16 hour two flight before I made it to America. Wow. And key avenues of approach. Some bridges were blown up. Some airports uh, were completely shut down because they'd been bombed. You like key avenues of approach change really, really fast. And don't take your kids on vacation wherever you just came back from. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> Touche. Uh, wh- well, on the train, I ran into a bunch of missionaries. Yeah. Okay. Maybe wait till your kids are older. Yeah. Like, True humanitarian, good heart people that eventually people like Chantry are going to have to go rescue. Yeah. Not you. That's a different, yeah. different problem. Different episode. Yeah. Let's we should <laughs> do an episode on that one time. Missionaries. Man. They won't like it. Yeah. But here it comes. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're literally doing God's work, right? So yeah. it's hard to tell, say like, no, like it's in their charter that they're going to take those risks, right? So um, there just has to be people willing to go save them. Yeah. So we'll, we'll throw up the ACOCA acronym, but there's a little bit more complex one, which is called the PMISI PT, political, military, economic, social info, infrastructure, physical environment, and time. So um, PMISI PT, I think is rad. And it's a really great acronym to know when you're working on planning. So political, if you are going to be going to Africa, or heck, anywhere in Eastern Europe right now, mm-hmm. the Grin Global, Regional, in Immediate, and Near, like politically, what are things that are going to shape your time in a place? So Grin is a cool acronym. Grin is globally, what is something politically that is happening? And then regionally, like how does, and these are all things that will affect you and your mission. So politically, uh, when Trump and Biden were figuring out the 2020 presidential election like that was a political thing that had absolutely international ramifications and um like trump was so polarizing and there was so much tension obviously around january 6 and like the world was hanging in in balance of like what's going to happen right now in eastern europe with the invasion of ukraine by you know breaking the sovereignty of their borders by the absolute assholes that are russia um like eastern europe is an influx right now yeah and then not to mention all the little countries around that are sending in yeah. people and you know they kind of see the writing on the wall they're like if we don't stop this then we're next yeah right poland so. czech republic romania finland like they're they're all playing um you know if, if you're going to be going 
uh, if you're, hey man, I want to go see the the gorillas in Africa. I saw like a cool video speaking about the Ukraine thing. Um, it was like a, a Muslim. I want to say it was like Serb uh, and an Israeli, and they were like in in a a bunker, and it's getting they're taking artillery, and the Serbians like, how bad is Russia if you have a Muslim and a Jew teamed up? <laughs> The Russians yeah. right now, like they're like, there's literally it's exploding around them, and yep. it's only like Funker five thirty. I think it's I was laughing. Totally. The um, you know, Putin wants the USSR of old, like that's the borders that he wants, <clears throat> and so every single one of those bordering nations that are now in NATO, like Czech Republic knows they're on the chopping block. You know, Poland knows that they're on the chopping block. Romania. I don't know if people remember, but this same thing happened like 90 years ago, 80, yeah. 90 years ago, where a guy started taking back countries that used to belong to his country. And then like things devolved. Yeah. <laughs> Wish people would know a little bit of history. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's just Poland. It's fine. right? You know, and then there's regions of the world. American love, America's love stability and security for two reasons. It, it provides an opportunity for capitalism and democracy. And that stability and security are great for us because those are countries that we can work with. Um, there are regions of the world that are not stable and do not have security. Uh, but there, there are regions that I love to go to. Um, and I have to work there. I like to vacation there. And ironically, they're some of the most beautiful places on the planet that are always in term, term, turmoil. You know, if, if we look at the world right now, there are areas that are in the midst of revolutions and coups. You have ones that are knocking on the door of uh, via kind of socialist ideals are now crumbling. Uh, Venezuela, um, which is flowing over into neighboring countries, um, creating humanitarian crises. Um, I mean, even in the United States on the southern border, people don't understand how bad it is in and around the Mexican border, like legit humanitarian crises. Yeah. Um, it, it, for, for some reason, it just doesn't make it into the, like the mainstream news, but literally if you just Google like American abducted, right? Like I did it this morning. I looked and it was, it's like, holy shit. Like, how do we not hear about all these things? Like where they're taking guys off of a ranch hunting in South Texas and taking them across the border and like kidnapping them, yeah. you know? Do you know how many people disappear from El Paso? No. Yeah, if you, you want a creepy thing, Google kidnappings or disappearances or missing persons in El Paso. Um, well, what happens is they go into Juarez. Well, they don't go. They are brought into Juarez, and that is the end of them. So, like, there's never reported. They're never found. They're just missing, and uh, it is... it is. Yeah. So, I know two guys. One of them actually is a Great Sumida uh, purple belt. They were uh, mountain climbing down in Monterey and were abducted. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, big bend. Like I, I hunt in South Texas, and I, I have whether I'm bow hunting or rifle hunting, and then I have my gun on my hip that has people bullets in it, mm -hmm. and there, it's far enough from the border where somebody would be so desperate that they would walk up to you and hit you in the back of the head of the rock to take the one bottle of water that you have on you because they haven't seen water in a day and a half. Like that's wow. So if, if, if we look here in 2021, the, the Texas Department of Public Safety missing persons clearinghouse tallied 46,581 missing person reports, including more than 33,000 juveniles. In El Paso County, there were 206 adults and 912 ju uh, juveniles reported missing in 2021. Wow. My husband also hunts in far south Texas, so new thing to worry about when he's out there with yeah. no cell service or anything else. Oh man, yeah. Sorry, it is. Sorry, it husband. Is, it is on down there. So like, and they are. But I mean, think eleven hundred people in El Paso. Eleven hundred people. That's crazy. Like, you know, I think about like my, my church. That is like one of my congregations times two, just gone in a year. Wow. And that's missing persons. We're not talking known kidnappings or known murders. Like those are just missing persons. Those numbers are always really strange because it doesn't take into account like who was recovered or, you know, like they were a runaway and then they came back. It would be interesting to see those numbers, like yeah. see them kind of because statistics, you know how they are. It's yeah. like you can always kind of skew them to 
favor one way or another. So that just way, they were reported missing, numbers. right? Not necessarily they stayed. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. So but if you compared um, San Diego, California, which is a border city, if you put, compare that to El Paso, and you took the total number of people missing, and then the outcome of those people, I think you'd be pretty. It would be pretty startling to see how dire it is in Texas border countries. Yeah. Counties. Yeah. So there you go. 1,100 adults missing, 24 are still open cases, and then 900 kids and 100 are still open. Wow. So now yeah. then how it was closed, there's different stories, right? Like there had to have been some sort of resolution, whether that person wound up that they were dead or they returned or whatever. But yeah. Um, El Paso is definitely not the size of San Diego. No. So. So in PMC PT and research and planning, you know, looking and understanding the political environment of the places that you're going to be going. Uh, I was telling you before we started about when I was going to go to Disney World with my family and President Trump was going to be there and totally changed all of our plans. We had to change the time of year that we're going to or when we're going to be going, where we're going to be staying. Uh, because he would have affected my mission, my end state of having a great mm -hmm. time at Disney World. Like we weren't be able to fly in at the time because they were going to shut down the airspace on his arrival, like in and around where he was going to be staying, which was like geographically dire directly adjacent to where we were going to be. That was going to affect our ability to do key um, avenues, key terrain avenues approach. My hotel, key avenue or key terrain, the park, key terrain, um, and the avenues of approach totally jacked by him. Mm -hmm. So back to PMC PT, military, economic, social, um, social. When you and your husband are white, your kids are white and pretty, um, going to places, there's places on the planet that you're not welcome. Yeah. There's places in Miami you're not welcome. Yeah. You know, uh, there's places in Paris where a tourist is totally fine and you go two blocks off of the main tourist area. And as an American, you are like in a dangerous, can be kidnapped or murdered, will absolutely be mugged or raped in Paris. Like you're mm -hmm. one stop off from having a bad day on a on a bus or a train there. Just getting lost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, infrastructure. My kids like to use regular bathrooms. Like my two-year-old does not handle loud toilets right now. My little savages could care less, man. I actually have to try to get them to use bathrooms. <laughs> pee it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Dysentery, that's not fun. Yeah. Would uh, infrastructure also be like a hospital close by? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, I mean, uh, do they have, depending on what your family situation is, do they have um, medications that you need you're going to bring the, the stuff that you need for you, but let's say it's, it's lost in your bag. Mm. Can you find insulin where you're going? Like, does the hospital have the infrastructure to be able to support patients? Like during COVID, there were places that would not take, one well, you couldn't travel. Um, but if you by chance got stuck there, you're not getting treated. Not even yeah. taking it as far as like insulin, right? Like epinephrine, yeah. right? Like an EpiPen. Is that something that you can get in these places? That does your kid have an allergy that you need to be considerate of? You know, it's a lot of stuff like that to where you really need to plan ahead and plan for the worst case of like you're there for an extra week mm -hmm. to like something gets shut down and it's like you didn't bring exactly enough to get you through, but you brought you some extra to get you to that next point. Yeah. Right? So well, and even you know, a lot of families now you have certain brands or you want something more natural. So a lot of times when you're traveling, you're not going to find that. So that's another thing to either plan yeah. and bring enough, even things you might not necessarily need or see if there's the type of stores that you like to shop at, especially with your kids. I wonder if people traveling abroad into the United States for the past few months had to worry about where they're going to get baby formula. <laughs> you yeah. Yeah. They're like, ah, vacation to the United States is off. We can't feed our baby. Yeah. So either bring enough or don't go. Is it just the United States issue? Yeah. Wow. Didn't know that. Yeah. That was uh, America problems. 
we we uh, we enacted some pretty extraordinary emergency efforts that we haven't used since World War II to bring in to bring in baby formula. We flew in baby formula from everywhere else in the world. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, water, potable water, um, lights. It, you know, like, do, do you have a converter for your plug? Like some really simple stuff for, you know, like blowing out your blow, your blow dryer and uh, having to pay the bill for frying the electrical equipment of the hotel. Yeah. Don't do that. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a video. I want your thoughts on it. Now, before, before you throw stones, I'm going to tell some backstory. Uh, I have brilliant, powerful, empowered young women in, uh, that are my daughters. Oh, and, no. Yeah. Not this video. <laughs> they, are, they are studs, um, but they are also very headstrong like me. And um, I love them dearly, and they are so so free um, because they're so strong and because they're so smart. Uh, but one of them, when she was a little bit younger, felt that she was invincible. And so uh, when she traveled a little bit, she, she I, th I think, could have very easily been a situation like Taken where she just would have been, dis she would have just been kidnapped or disappeared. So I wanted her to know how easy it was for her just to be kidnapped. And uh, she's like you, she's petite, she's blonde, she's beautiful. And uh, so this is at a gym that at the time is surrounded, like there's a bunch of cops inside working out. There's a bunch of high level martial artists, jujitsu and fighters that are at this gym at this time. And I enlisted two of my very good friends to kidnap my young teenage daughter. Wow. I was You're, not one of these friends. I just want to go on record that I was not involved in this. Okay. So go ahead and play it, Doug. This is my daughter learning how easy it is to get kidnapped. It's not a joke. It's serious stuff. And uh, traveling to Europe, she was very confident, perhaps overly confident. So this is um, how easy and scary it is. wild because even at look look at her she's still fighting she's still kicking where are we going Co Pominos, <laughs> Aaron solid acting by Aaron yeah. Okay. <laughs> hi yeah I got it you got it, it. alright I love you look how badass she is smiling Yo, she had a bag thrown over her head and she was whisked out of the girls room and carried out of the back she had no idea she never saw anybody and she fought the whole entire time she kicks Aaron she knees Shane and and as soon as she hits the ground and the bag comes off she's like I got it dad <laughs> dude I love that I love that girl um, so not that you need to kidnap your own children Every child is different, but like, how do you, like Torn, my two-year-old, that girl is going to be a problem. My six-year-old, wild. How, how I mean, I'm not going to put a leash on my kids. I want them to feel empowered. I want them to be safe, but how do you create a, a safe environment that they can be free in? Like when they're two and six, or are you talking about when they're teenagers? I don't and know. I mean, all, all the above. Yeah, I don't know. That's a really tough one. It's a um, delicate balance. Yeah, it's like you try. It's tough, like just even on the day to day, because you want to protect him from everything. Big Gunner riding the motorcycle the other day, yeah. right? It's like he's never ridden a motorcycle before in his life, and he just was like, "Dad, I know how to do it." It's like, "All right, like yeah. figure it out." He he rolled. He like did a cartwheel on the <laughs> thing, end over, you know, but. Yeah. Oh. He went between two trees oh, yeah. oh. after skipping the motorcycle and flipping and doing an endo. Wow. I, my favorite was Rolo's response of like, man, if we'd have gotten that on video, you'd have gotten so, <laughs> so many views. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Rolo was like, I should have videoed that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is a balance of kind of equipping them with the, the tools that they need and, and knowing, knowing when to step back a little like my almost nine-year-old all of a sudden he's too cool to hold our hands in the street shut up yeah no, I don't and actually that. my I don't that. my husband's having a tougher time than me he's like oh, why yeah. is he embarrassed of us i'm like you know as long as he's mature enough to know to walk right next to us 
I'm okay with letting go of his hand. So it's it's finding that when can I let go? You will hold my hand. Yeah, I'm not that's, ready for that. That's what my husband says. Yeah. Yeah. That just gave me like the, <laughs> I'm not ready for that. Yeah. yeah. No. My, my big girls still hold my hand. Wow. Like college. Maybe I know it's different you scared with, them enough. No, they're not scared of me. <laughs> like even there, do you see it? So like, as soon as the thing comes off her face, she's like, hi dad, I got it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. yeah. I wish they were scared of me. So talking about planning this stuff, right? Um, Cause I've, we've glazed over a lot, but so where do you start, right? So, all right, we're taking this trip to Paris. Um, wife and two kids, where do you start? I, I think first is the research on, but before you can start making plans about where am I gonna stay, what, how am I gonna fly, um, doing your pre-planning research of that PMECPT, PT, um, understanding the political, military, economic, social, infrastructure, physical environment time, like breaking that down, which would then drive the train about what decisions I'm gonna make. Like, do I have to be vaccinated? Can, do I have to get a COVID test? Do, as an American, do I need a visa? Um, These are all stuff, this is all things that you can go to like usembassy.gov or something, right? To go to the STEPS program, yep. sign up, yep. right? So a lot of those answers you can find literally right away. from the Department of State yep. on that website. You can go to CIA data book and that gives you all of this information. It tells you what um, type of economy they have, what kind of money they use. They tell you um, who is the current president, um, prime minister, whoever king. Um, they they tell you, uh, they break down the demographics of this is the, the percentage for every religion. This is um, socioeconomically, how they're broken up. Like this is the medium income. This is, here's all the crime statistics, all broken down by really simply by like on, on the CIA's website. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So you can find all like the infrastructure. It'll tell you if it's potable water, if they have um, sewage, if they have um, the medical facilities, they'll tell you what kind of trauma centers that they have, what kind of doctors that they use. Um, all of that is right there. So you can start finding the information, which then can drive the train. So to answer your questions first, I think it is clearly defining what is my end state? What is my mission? Like, am I on a missions trip? Am I on vacation? Am I there to explore? Like those are different things, which, which would mean I'm going to plan differently. You know, um, having, you know, only two little ones in the house now, it was different when I had my big kids because we were more adventure focused. Right. We wanted to go and experience. We wanted to see nature. We wanted to ride on trains. We wanted to not know sometimes, you know, like that was the thrill of it, of, of being this explorer and on this adventure. Um, like there are well-traveled young women that are comfortable going anywhere. Like I take them any, I could take them anywhere in the world with me now and without, with, without having to be really worried and they could do this stuff with me. Like I could ask, I could ask Julia or Sabrina, like, Hey, me CPT, go to CIA data book, build me this out and let's start booking our flights. And like, they'll, they'll come back. Hey, this is how we're going to fly. This is where we're going to stay. You know, when we're going to stay, this is the reason that I picked it. Um, I asked to stay on the third floor. It's high enough where somebody can't get into our window, but it's low enough that we can jump out. You know, we're, we're like three doors down from the stairway. Like they know all this stuff. Pretty rad. That's awesome. Yeah. I start thinking about like, all right, we're going to this location. And we're going to stay here in this central city, but we want to go see these sites out in these other places, right? So how are we going to travel there, right? Our cars, like, can we get a rental car here? Does my driver's license translate? Do I need to have a driver's permit there? Are there car seats? Do they have seat belts, right? Like, start thinking about those things. How are you going to travel with those, like, those safety considerations? Yep. Having those alternate plans for just transportation, like, does, does everybody just ride a train, okay? Where are the train stations at? What are the crime statistics like there? You know, what culture am I traveling traveling into? Does do we need to be more conservative in our dress? Right, like things like that start mm -hmm. to make those considerations so that you're not standing out. Right, is there a lot of robberies? So your kids don't need to be walking around like three kids and three iPads walking around staring at them the whole time, just drawing attention to yourself. Starting those considerations of. How do I try to blend at least as best I can and have a plan for point A to point B and a backup plan for if that goes wrong, right? 
Yeah. That's where my brain immediately starts going is like kind of building out that itinerary of like, okay, what do we want to do? How are we going to get there? What are we going to do while we're there? If something goes wrong there, is there a place we could stay there? You know, yep. all those, those contingencies um, so that I can enjoy the time while I'm there and not be thinking about them in the middle of that. Yep. Do you think that when I go to a place, I have other ways to get out of that place that I'm going besides my flight that's already scheduled? Heck yeah, yeah. right? Like even if you're just, <clears throat> and this is why PMC PT is so great, like maybe you're flying to a place that is secure now, but they're gonna have an election. Is it gonna be secure after the election? I don't know. That was something I saw and uh, it was like the Department of State website that I didn't even know about was uh, like evacuation insurance. Mm. emergency evacuation insurance right and so like even it says uh this is actually the u.s it's travel.state.gov but it says like have an evacuation plan that does not involve the u.s government rescuing you yeah because like, oh, wow. guess what they're not they're coming. not yeah 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 little everybody thinks that the u.s government is like no one left behind they are not coming for you i promise right. yeah like you're gonna have to figure out your own way out of wherever you're going even if you're like an ambassador in an embassy that's being set on fire no. They might not come yeah. get you. Buena yeah. suerte, amigo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. good luck, friend. It's, yeah, watch the movie in a few years. Yeah, there's a, there, there is, it's, it's misrepresented because Americans think that America will always come for them. They won't. They won't, and historically they haven't. Um, but there are groups that do it. Uh, like, I'm part of an organization, Save Our Allies, we were founded in literally going to go and save Americans and our allies that were left and abandoned by our country. So um, I'm pretty tied into what this looks like to get out of a place. And you know, even the, the trip that I'm going on in a few weeks, like, yeah, I, I have my, my, obviously my primary way in there is the flight, the return round trip flight that we booked. Um, I also have an alternate contingent and emergency way to get cross border and get out of there. Um, and uh, I, I I know like people are like, oh, cool. Like you can what, buy extra train tickets. You can like rent a car. You can buy a car. There's so many different things that you can do and you can do it inexpensively, but the, ple the pre-planning thing is the best thing that you can do. Knowing where the train station is, knowing where the rental car places are, bringing enough money just to be like, like money, American dollars, they're a get out of jail free card. Yeah. Like. I, w I bring a watch that is nice enough that I can barter with, but not so nice that it will draw negative attention. Right. Um, little, just little things like that go so far. And technology now between Garmin, um, Gotenna, uh, InReach, sat phones via Iridium, apps that you can download data on, like you have so many options now. It is really easy to, to be connected and have plans yeah and then oh sorry go ahead no i just had a question pop up so yeah. someone like you that's usually always uh carrying when you're home what do you do in countries where you know maybe you couldn't travel with that and you can't do that yeah. like how do you feel safe well so under under permissi pt depending on where i'm going will and uh, the laws of where i'm going will allow me to carry or not carry like there are places that once you get there you can still carry you know if um i am going to some places in africa and not even in like a military capacity, like I'm going there as a hunter on safari, you know, um, you land and there, there have been times where l like literally the, the pH that I was working with was like, yeah, let's go go Tim. You know, I was like, thank you. <laughs> and off we go. Uh, is that a factor in your, where you would travel? Through? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, or an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I'm going to a place that I don't need to carry a gun. Yeah. You know, like there, there are people with guns where my family is staying that will protect my family yeah. um, or that is so safe that they're not even needed. You know, you, um, there are some resorts where like good luck walking through the front gate unless you have a reservation there and you have a blue American passport because they will murder you there at the gate. And then there's another dude with a machete behind the dude with the AK. <laughs> you know, like, there's resorts like that. Right. Um, and then there's some, but like that gets back to the mission and end state. Depends on what I'm doing and where I'm going. Yeah. Like if it's just me and I'm going there for work, I'm there going there 
um, you know, for a pre-deployment site survey for a nonprofit, like that's going to be way different than me traveling with my, my little children. Mm -hmm. Like one of them that's just potty trained. Like these are different things. Yeah. So that, that reverse planning, what is my mission end state? And then what is my research and pre-planning preparing me to make sure I'm the safest that I can be. The last thing of Pamisi PT is time. And that's usually like thinking about the time of year, the time of day, like all of that. But it's also your time. Like how much time do you have to spend to do this research? Mm-hmm. In the busy lives that we li- live right now, like we don't have a ton of time. Uh, but I still have to dedicate enough time to make sure that the outcome I want to happen happens. Right. Which is why pre-COVID I liked cruises because it doesn't take a lot of your time. It's like you get on there and then you're good to go. I'm still but. not ready for I'm still not ready to get back on a ship. No. Uh, well, <laughs> well, they're ready for you because yeah, the discounts yeah. are pretty extraordinary because they just want to get people back on their boats. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, they, um, I've had like, you know, they do like jujitsu seminars on mm-hmm. ships now. And Carl was like, Hey, this, this group offered, it was an obscene amount of money to just host a, and like bring our audience and like our jujitsu students onto this boat because they just need them so bad. <laughs> they just need people back on boats. It's crazy. Wow. You no, know, not, not there yet. No. And I mean, I, um, yeah, what 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 is your alternate contingent emergency evacuation plan off of a boat? No, I mean, yeah. yeah, there's there's been plenty of cases where people just were stuck on a boat staring at dry yeah. land. Do you remember when they were like flying drones onto boats that were stuck in the harbor to bring resupplies? Like you would call me and be like, "Hey, I'm stuck in the Miami Harbor or San Diego Harbor. I'm on the third floor, room 3. There's a window open." And I would fly a drone with like McDonald's. Is that during COVID? Yeah. During they COVID. couldn't get back in? Yep. Wow. They were stuck on a boat for like six weeks. Yeah. We what? were on a Disney cruise literally a week before they started not letting ships back in. Whoa. But that was before, you know, they weren't given refunds because of COVID. It wasn't real yet. So we were like, I guess we're going. And then, That's still not real. Yeah. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> not going sure. there. Not, not going, going there. there. Um, uh, I mean, just coming back from Ukraine, Russia, did you know that Russia absolutely cured all of East, Eastern Europe from COVID? Did not know that. Yeah. True. Absolutely 100% true. No. When people had to worry about bombs and uh, starving to death. They stopped worrying about masks. They stopped worrying about having, getting a cold. Yeah. 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 And nobody's fat over there. So <laughs> when uh, it's a fat killer and you're not fat. It's not really a killer. Hmm. Yeah, thanks. The only thing we can thank Russia for, (laughs) curing Eastern Europe of COVID. I mean, they cured us here from talking about it as much, so. Yeah. Yeah. That's helpful. Um, Back to weapons. I also like improvise something that is within the legal laws of wherever I'm at. Ish, legal-ish. Legal-ish. Like going to Mexico, you can't have a gun. You can't have a knife either, but you can get a knife. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. Does, does like a cookie knife count? I mean, it just happened to be laying there whenever I needed it. Yeah. Right. And I hate when everybody answers, I'd, I'd rather be, you know, judged by 12, but then carried by six. You're not getting a fair trial in Mexico. Nope. So no, it's not a, that's not, and that's yeah. not a fair litmus test of, is it a good idea? Yeah. My, my thought process was much more of like, I would much rather get my wife to safety and deal with whatever those repercussions are after. If it gives me like the little bit of an opportunity to like get her safe to wherever, then I'll deal with the back end of it. Can we talk about that for a second? What is the, um, do you have like a pre-discussed getting my wife to safety plan? Ish. Like, so so like anytime we go out, right? Yeah. Um, Travel ones. Four dudes approach you outside the restaurant and they're like, hey, MFR, get over here. What is your wife doing? So we both always carry this uh, car key to the same vehicle, right? Yeah. So, cause I always drive. So I always have the car key in my pocket. She also always has a car, a car key. And at that point it's going to be, have you guys ever talked about this ahead of time? No. Okay. Listen to this. Yeah, I'm listening. I have pre-planned stuff with my wife. And so my like f- even just for date night. That's right. We are on date night tonight. And if I get jumped by four dudes, do you think my wife's going to hop in there and try to help me? She better not. She is not. Yeah. No. Nope. So 
Yeah, I mean, it, so then are the, the kids keys, with you yep, or not? Keys too? and cell phone. Does she have them both? Yep. Those are two important things. Yeah, so you can't, I can't ask her to go get the car or get away from here. And then the keys are in my pocket, yeah. right? And she's just standing there at the door. So, yeah, I mean, it's just going to depend. But it, the big thing is whatever I communicate, she's going to yeah. to do. And no, she's not going to jump in and try to help me. If, if I'm like, hey, get to the car or get back inside or do whatever I need you to do, she trusts me and she'll listen to that. And we've pre-planned enough of that that uh, she knows. Yeah. Like, this, is, this is one of the cool things. I mean, it would take, I would say, six grown men – with the average training of being hoodlum assholes to kind of deal with you. And uh, it's wild, right? It's kind of yeah. cool. We'll like be sitting there at a, at a, at a place and having tacos and we'll like look around and there's 20 people in there and we're like, we could kill everyone here with our bare hands and nobody could stop us. Wow. It's cool. It's fun. But, um, so for my wife, she just like that, we, we like pre plan. She has the keys. She has a cell phone and um, she is going to meet me at the car. Like she's going to get out of the way. I, I can I can deal with lots of problems. It's way harder for me to deal with lots of problems and, and protect protect her. her. Yeah. Well, and if they grab her, then they have kind of got you. Yeah. So like getting 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 her off the X and she's fast. Melissa's fast, too. Yeah. Not to mention, like, good luck. Like yeah. if you were to grab onto her, like you're in for the yeah. fight. Like yeah. I even like, I don't even like, like tickling or anything because the fight is on. I'm like, Shit. she's all she's... bone, like sinew. Like his, his wife is gorgeous and she's like always jacked. Yeah, and like I'll be like, ah, so good. Ouch. <laughs> because she's just and yeah, Ginger's sharp everywhere and always carries sharp things. Yeah, yeah I still no. so Ginger's carrying now. Finally, good. Got the concealed carry. Finally got her a gun that she's comfortable with. Um, but I don't think she'd ever be confident enough. Um, especially if I'm in the mix to introduce that thing. Right. Now I wouldn't want her to like, she needs to take that and use that as a tool to ensure she gets to where she's going, which is in the car. No. Yeah. We also use, um, we got air tags and life 360, which are two handy tools to, um, see where each other are. Do you, do you mm. use life 360? No, we have the find my friend yeah. on my friend. the phone. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's where my but, air tags are. Yeah. So I have like air tags in my kid's stuff. Oh, that's smart. I have them sewn into his shoes. I have them in my daughter's school backpack. She doesn't carry the backpack everywhere. So like, what else can I put on her that um, I can track? Obviously, like the smart watches, we can track those. A um, lot, of, lot of cool tech these days. Yeah, I was, I was actually talking to Mel about this last night. And I was like, what, what would be your considerations? And um, she had some good points that she does that I didn't even really think about, but like whenever we go out into public, we go to a water park or anything like that. Like she puts them in matching bright clothing. Like they have these mm -hmm. bright lime green bathing suits, you know, and things like that. So whenever we go out in these places so that she can easily spot them and ID them, like they will always wear their hats. Right. So she, she puts them in hats that she can see. Uh, so just little mom hacks to no. always track the kiddos. They, 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 the boys match. She actually dresses them matching when they're, when they're like going out. It's kind of brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. You know and, who they belong to. Yeah. Right? And I think you, you'd be in a, a fight to separate those two. Yeah. Yeah. They're a little savage. Yeah. This is, she sent me a video of them reading earlier and it turned into like full contact reading. <laughs> <laughs> is this all going to be linked in the podcast so I can easily look this up later? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So I, I can, you can set up groups. So I have my buddies and I have my family. So here's where I am. Here's where my wife is. Um, here's where my daughters are. Oh, one of them's driving right now. Let's see how fast. 76 miles an hour. Wow, it tells you yeah. speed limit? Uh, well, I know the speed limit there is 65, so they're going 11 miles an hour. So let's go ahead and let's shoot a little, <laughs> shoot a little message here. Um, so a thing that I thought of for this as driving well. Driving too fast. Uh, traveling to other countries is, especially with small kids, is showing them what the helpers look like, right? Because police officers in London don't dress the same as they dress in Austin, right? That's a great Places point. like that. So identifying to little ones who to look for in these places that can help them out, right? Whether Even that's, within the United States sometimes, the, yeah, car, the police cars look totally different. That's a cars look idea. different. Like, um, yeah, they, in like London and places like that, they wear like reflective vests. You know, they almost look like construction workers. Cross so making sure that little ones that maybe can't read or wouldn't immediately identify because they don't have guns on them either, right? So they're not going to 
maybe notice that they're police officers. So pointing those things out to them of what to look for whenever you're looking for people that can help you um, early, right, in advance. And so having that plan. They also make like little, uh, Mel sent me like little keychain alarms, right, that have like a pull tab on it that you can just clip onto their backpack or something yep. like that. They get separated, you pull it, puts off a lot of noise. So then you can like find them, um, showing them what the employees at this, the theme park look like or where they can go. You know, hey, if you do get separated and I can't find you, just go to one of these shops and tell them that you're lost. They also make little, like for Disney World, they make little tattoos you can put on your kids that say, you know, like their name and a mom's phone number. Yeah. They're lost. Yeah, my kids, that was one thing that Mel did earlier is teaching them uh, our phone numbers, right? Yep. So they yeah, have our phone numbers smart. memorized. If they can't, if they're too young to memorize it, write it on a piece of paper, put it in their pocket, write it on their arm. You know? They also mm -hmm. know the uh, going to look for a mom with a stroller. Mm -hmm. You're like, th that's a helper. Like they're, they're, if there's, you know, a mom with a small enough child to be in a stroller, you know, and you're in most places that is, they can go up, they can rehearse or they can regurgitate their cell phone number. They're going to, like, you're going to get a call. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keeping them close, right. You're in the airport or whatever. So keeping them close, holding hands. If they won't hold hands, like put them in a stroller, have them on a leash, just making sure that you're keeping them close to you because it's really easy to get distracted looking at, flight times or, or mm -hmm. devices or maps or whatever and then just a little bit of separation and yeah when my son was a toddler we loved uh the little baby backpacks you know as he got bigger we had the whole hiking backpack but we traveled with that instead of a stroller yeah. I mean, it was before we had our second child so it's just him on my husband's back the whole time we never really Passed had to out. yeah we never really had to think about oh where is he grab his hand you know he yeah. was tagging there's along there's a there's a video out of atlanta the atlanta airport where it's like a two-year-old kind of walked away from mom, jumps on the conveyor belt, takes oh a ride all gosh. the way down the conveyor mm. belt, goes through the x-ray machine. Um, he winds up like breaking his hand and they, they, they got him off of it, but like it was a, it was like that quick, you know, you're not yeah. quick. Yeah. You're not quick. Kids get separated. And um, so just, it's really easy to get distracted in these traveling events. So having those plans as well and having those like, all right, Tim, you're on Torin right yes. now. She is your responsibility, right? We always And like having that. accountability because otherwise you turn around and you're like, where's this kid at? I thought you were watching him. I thought you were watching him. Mm -hmm. you know? And the stress of traveling, especially with a family, pre-planning takes away so much of that stress. Like the, um, it is so, to, to be present and to be intentional and to be in the moment and to, you know, like to, to be present and, and like, am I actually on vacation? Are we having a good time here? Yeah. Or am I just freaking out about all of this stuff? Well, the more work that you do ahead of time, the less you're gonna freak out. The more research that you do, the more enjoyable of time that you're gonna have. The better the resort's gonna be, you know, like the better the food's gonna be, the better the hotel reservations are gonna be. You know, like if you think, like even like Disney World, if you think you could just show up and walk into like Cinderella's castle and have dinner, no. zero chance. You no, had to you book cannot. that four months ago, mm -hmm. you know? Um, yeah, and you ha now you have a crying four-year-old because she thought she was going to get to have yeah. princess and the dinner. Expectation management, you didn't made promises that you couldn't keep. Right. But you, that all would have been solved with a little bit of planning and a little bit of research. Mm -hmm. you know, like, I know we sound kind of like psychopaths, but like, it makes it so much more enjoyable and so much safer if you take this approach. Well, so I'm, we gonna I'm terrible at... It's not, make, it's not, it's not bad. Okay. Like he doesn't get, it's not like brutal to watch or anything. You just watch it and you're like, yep, I can see how that could happen really quick. Yeah. Go ahead. This looks fun. I think I will go. Oh, wow. I even worry about them getting their fingers and hair caught up in those conveyor belts. Yeah. Made those uh, escalators. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. some, especially abroad. There he is going through the x-ray machine, trying mm. not to. He's like, oh, yeah. I don't like oh, this. X-ray machines. Don't put gangster stuff in your bags when you think you're going to be a gangster because you're not. Like most first world countries have these things. And if you pack things that you're not supposed to have in that country, they will know about it. And then your vacation will be ruined because you're like, oh, well, uh, Tim said I should be safe and I should bring this stuff. No, you should follow the laws of the place that you're going. Yeah. So anyways, he winds up in the back and it just happened super quick. Just yeah. turned around. So mom was um, probably waiting on the bags. That again Looking goes to like pre-planning of like, Hey, who's, who's on baby duty while 
the other parent is handling this logistical portion, right? Yep. Uh, I think we nailed it. Yeah, I think so. I have a patch for you. It's a be violent, be done. There you go. This is the About Violence podcast. Thank we you. have uh, Michelle Myers to my right, Chandra Coco to our left. We have been discussing making sure that when you go on vacation, you can actually enjoy your vacation. Doug, we're going to put all these links in the info and stuff like yep. that. So you'll be able to find them whenever you come and watch the podcast. Pamisi PT, Akoka, Grin, CIA data book, Steps, Steps, Department of State. Yeah, all that stuff will be there. Sweet. All right, stay safe, stay free, and if necessary, be violent.